No, there is a high rate of there, there is a high rate of good men that are being turned to be bad people, evil people. The rate at which men are being baptized to what is not correct, to what is not good, it's really alarming. Very alarming. In our country, you can tell by the introduction of what they were trying to introduce. But the good people rose and said, not in our days, not in our generation. And not even generations to come. That your son will marry another, another person's son. Your daughter will come and introduce another somebody's daughter to you. Edith, can you imagine that? Mommy, I want to get married. And you are rejoicing. And she introduces you a faith. <laughs> and you are wondering, what, what is happening? What, what is going on? That darkness can never prevail over this nation. Not only this nation, all over the world. I don't care whatever they call their rights. It's also our right. Is, there their, is it their world alone? So that, 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 that one can never be. Unless the Bible does not say nothing about it. So we have said there is a high rate of good men that are being turned to be evil. That's why we need to rise as many as we can. Good people. So that they can slay the darkness of bad people. People that have decided we will do evil at all cost. Give us Isaiah in Amplified Version. Isaiah 5 verse 20 in Amplified Bible Version very fast. Then you will give us Job. Kindly write them down so that we can flow together. Job 20 4 to 15. Job 20 verse 4 to 15. Amplified and Message Bible. We will read later on. Then you'll give us um, uh, Job, uh, Job uh, chapter. Okay, that one we have already. You'll repeat Job again in Message Bible translation later on. Job chapter twenty, verse four and verse eleven. So you will repeat it again. Then you'll give us ERV of Galatians, Galatians chapter six. Verse 9 to 10. Galatians 6, 9 to 10 ERV. Acts 10, Acts 10, 38. Verse, uh, amplified version. Then you give us TPT. It's not a party. It's a Bible translation. TPT, Galatians 5, 16. Then you'll also give us Isaiah 60. Verse 2 to 3, Amplified Classic. Amplified Classic. Isaiah 60, verse 2 to 3. Then Galatians, New King James Version, Galatians 6, 10. Some, some of these books might repeat themselves, don't worry. Galatians 6, 10, New King James Version. Then Ephesians 5, verse 8, Amplified. Ephesians 5, verse 8, amplified. 2 Corinthians 3, 2 Corinthians 3, verse 2, ASV, ASV. Then Acts 17, verse 23. Acts 17, verse 23, amplified. Acts 11, 26. Acts 11, 26, the voice. Voice Bible translation. Then Philippians 2. Philippians 2 verse 8. Proverbs. Philippians 2 verse 8 amplified. Proverbs 25. Proverbs 25 from verse 21 to 22 amplified. Proverbs 25, 21 to 22 amplified. Romans 12. Romans 12, verse 20 to 21, voice before the service ends. Many scriptures, good diet.
for your spiritual growth. If you are in a church whereby at least 10 scriptures are not read for in that service, you just missed out on so much. Did you hear me? At least 10. At least 10 of them in every service. Because that's why you came to church. So that the God can speak more. There are places whereby people only have one scripture. The rest is story. Story, 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 story until the end of the service. But not in this place. So let's read Isaiah 25 verse 20 together. One, two, three. Let's read. Are you reading together with me or it is not in the screen? Sorry? The screens are not visible. What is happening? Sit there. Please read. One, two, three. Let's read. Can we repeat it together like you know English very well, like I know you know? One, two, three. Let's read together. Who substitute darkness for light and light for darkness. Who substitute bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Woe unto those who call that, that, that one, the judgment is just in bracket. Is that okay? This, that's why it's an amplified Bible version. Just to explain to you. War means judgment is coming. To those who call evil good. And those who substitute darkness for light. And those who substitute bitter for sweet. And sweet for bitter. When you interchange what is natural, when you pervert what has been programmed to happen naturally, then you are in error. Did you hear what I've said? The moment you begin to celebrate darkness, already you are in error. The moment you begin to jubilate in evil, then already you are in error. The Bible says, war unto you. Everybody has normalized. You can't be promoted until you bribe. So the church has joined in also. You want position, you need to part with certain things. You want to, to be, to, your salary to be increased, yet you have worked hard. You need to see someone. The HR or who is the money person? The cashier. You need to talk to them nicely behind closed doors. That's the norm. When you normalize evil, that's when you become, judgment begins to draw near to you. You see, the, this, this is the description of someone that loves evil. Let's see the description of that person in Job 20. Give us a message, then you'll give us in Amplified. I mean, Amplified, then message. Can we read it together? Four, verse 4 to 15. So it's a long reading. So better read very well. Is everyone looking at the screens? Everybody's eyes are shining. All right. One, two, three. Let's go. Since the time the man was placed on the earth, that the triumphing of the wicked is. Can we read that part again? That the triumphing of the wicked is short. Meaning that wicked can triumph. It's not, it, it, it is okay. Evil may look like it is winning, it is okay. But the Bible has a word for such people. The triumphing of the wicked is short. I am here to announce to you. Any evil around your life. Any evil person around you. Their triumphing is short lived. Their triumphing will not see the setting of the sun. 
Let's read it together. One, two, three. No, from verse four. Let's read from verse four. Very loudly. Do you know this from the old days? Since the time that man was placed on the earth. So it didn't begin today. Verse five. That the triumphing of the wicked is short. And the joy of the godless is only for a moment. Verse 6. Though his pride reaches the heavens and his head touches the clouds, yet he perishes forever like his own refuse. Those who have seen him will say, where is he? He flies away like a dream and cannot be found. Yes, he is chased away like a vision of the night. The high witch saw him, sees him no more. Neither does his accustomed place behold him any longer. His sons favor the poor and pay his obligations. And his hands give back his he'll gotten with them. Yes. His bones are full of youthful strength. But it lies down with him in the dust. What that means is, yet you are still powerful. You are still youthful. Yet you needed to do more for your life. But with all that your strength, with all what you would have achieved, if you lived a good life, you will lie in the dust with all of it. Verse 12, let's go. Though evil and wickedness are sweet. Do you believe that? There are people that love it. When they, oh my, have you ever seen somebody rejoicing or now they know how to insult? If you have never, I think then you are in your own world. There are people who brag. Hey, if, if abundance insults you, run for your life. That girl can empty insults on you like a magazine gun. No, not this our abundance. I used that because she's the most gentle person here. <laughs> Is it, have you met people that thrive in doing evil? They thrive in doing what is contrary. I was watching a documentary yesterday about a reformed gangster in Dandora. And he was saying he was warned and overwhelmed. He knew every danger of everything he did. But he was so used to it. So used to it, to a capacity, he began to steal from his mother. Oh, do you know what that means? Met with the mom at the corner end, and he knew the mother had received some small money. A and get a As he's so used to that life, anyone that he meets along the way becomes his customer. He doesn't care who it is. He was asked by the interviewer, what about if you met with a man of God? I said, ah, this one, better be careful how you answer. He said, uh, not all of them. There are those who I will selectively know. This one I can bring down and nothing will happen. But there are others that you begin to shake when you come around them. I say, now you, are, you have just answered very well. Though evil and wickedness are sweet. Let's continue. His mouth and and he hits it under his tongue. Yes. Though he desires it and will not let it go, but holds it in in his mouth. Yes. Yet his food turns to poison in his stomach. It is the venom of vipers within him. He swallows his hill gotten riches, but he will vomit them up. God will drive them out of his belly. I am here to announce to everyone that believes anything that has swallowed that belongs to you, anyone that has swallowed what belongs to your family, anything that swallowed your expectation, they vomit them now in the name of Jesus every snake that 
Swa Lord, you are health. Swa Lord, you are settlement. Swa Lord, you are progress. Swa Lord, you are health. They vomit it right now in Jesus' mighty name. Write this quote down. I already quoted them. I sent them to our to my to my Facebook wall and even on my Instagram. But I write them down. In the race between lie and truth, lie may win at first, but truth will win at last. In the race between lie and truth, the lie may win at first, but the truth will win at last. Number two, in the battle between good and evil, evil may prevail at first, but good must triumph at last. I repeat, in the battle between good and evil, evil may prevail at first, but good must triumph at last. It doesn't matter the evil. It doesn't matter the darkness at night. Light always prevails the moment it shows up. Then you can write this. Good deeds, good deeds always remain standing in the face of all oppositions and circumstances. Good deeds cannot be shaken by oppositions or circumstances. They remain standing. Good deeds always remain standing in the face of all circumstances. You see, the darker it gets in our world, the brighter the good people shine. The darker it gets in your life, the brighter you become. The more visible you become. Write this down. When the devil and his agents have done their worst, God is set to begin what is great. When the devil has done what he terms as worst, then God is set to begin what is great in the life of an individual. You see, Satan thought that he had already finished Jesus. He had thought that he had quenched the light of God when he caused men to crucify him. But he didn't realize that killing him was bringing to an end his error and beginning an era of the reign of God's children. There are situations in our lives that look like they have pressed us to the bottom part. And I have a word for someone. Whatever has pressed you until you are no longer going down, God says to tell you, it is time to go up now. It's time to go up right now. When you are being pressed by situations, to the world, to our capacity. There is no more turning back. God says to tell you, the only way is to break through that wall. And you are about to break every up through every obstacle. You are about to break through every obstacle. Anywhere the devil has pressed you against, you will break through the, in that area. In Jesus mighty name. And also, there's a time I taught you this, but you can write it down. How to fast empty a glass of dirty water is to put that empty glass of water under a cons consistent running clean water. How to empty a dirty glass? How to empty a glass that is full of dirty water? is introduce 
running water, continuous running clean water. And that dirty water in that glass will be turned to be very clean. The same way, as long as we have light shining consistently of men that are given to do good, men that are given to do what is right, then eventually every darkness in our world will end. If we have you, say me, if we have you, say me, we have you doing good each day, it means the empty glass of dirty water is about to be emptied. It's about to be transformed. Write this down. In life, you have control over your choices. You have control over what you want to choose. But you do not have the privilege of control over the circumstances of what you chose. In life, you have control over your choices. But you will never have control over the consequences of your choices. So choose today to do good. Choose to remain good. Choose to be light. Choose to be the person that will turn uh, uh, our world the right side up. Don't, don't be the one that will hard into the already existing darkness. Don't be the one to hard to, uh, to a world that is already e experiencing evil. Be the person that will change the norm of every evil. What do I mean by this? Let me use uh, Immaculate. Immaculate as she is walking. There is this, let, let's say she is working uh, in Microsoft. And uh, she has a very high position whereby she meets with the CEO every now and then. And this CEO is used to money is my God. Money is what I talk to people. It's what I, 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 I bring people close. Then this CEO approaches Immaculate and says, uh, young girl, um, I, want, I want us to do something then. I'm going, to, I'm going to promote you. Don't worry. Money is not an issue. I'll buy you the car. I'll get you the house. I will get you whatever you have, you have been expecting. It will take her to introduce light to that man. Yes, I know you are my boss. I know you have the money. I know you have the capacity. But I choose to be right. I choose to stand with God. And that man will look and say, you mean of all what I am offering you? You would rather remain without a better car, without a better pay, without a better position. You are standing for your integrity. Yes, sir. That is hiding light to an already existing darkness. But if she compromises, she becomes part of the darkness that that man is carrying. So she has not sorted out what she was supposed to sort out. There are some people, can we get to a lighter note? If you are a victim, please say the loud most amen. Makanga likurudishia change. You knew very well. This is beyond what I gave. Now kashukia the next stage. Or rather you, you slept so that the Makanga will not see your face again. Are we talking about you? No. <laughs> we are not talking about you. Went to a restaurant, you ate food. Gave the waiter came and brought you more change. You gave 200, he's bringing you a change of 1,000. You walked out smiling and declaring, God has come through for me. You are wicked. You are wicked. Learn how to do good Always. 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 Have you not heard stories of men that returned money that would have helped them and their lives were changed? 
Of course, if you lost something and somebody brings it back to you, it's wickedness for you not to change the life of that person. Is it not so? I had somebody that lost, how much was this? Around, I know it was in millions. This person picked the bag, went with it, gave it to his boss. I believe so and so is the person that is the owner of this bag. Please, once they come, let the money. I have counted. I know how much it is inside. The guy came and just dashed, I don't know, a thousand to the person. That person must be the devil themselves. You had lost everything. Somebody has re some of you. Hello? Somebody wrongly, mistakenly just died. Pram! To your phone. The first thing. Who knows that that person needed to know there is a God? And because God believes in his heart, he did this, my daughter. And I need to teach Lorna a lesson. I need Lorna to know there are good people that exist. Yes, I know I have not paid rent. I know I don't have food. I know I don't have what it takes. And the moment the money entered from Lorna, you said, okay, I didn't expect money from Lorna and I don't know any Lorna. You call back. Excuse me, you have just sent an amount on my phone. Is it for me or is it by mistake? And she says, oh my, I just sent by mistake. Return the money. Return the money. Some of you are harvesting the evil you sowed yesterday. You refuse to do good. So today, so you sent now your own wrong number. Am I speaking to somebody? Not the way you are looking at me. You are so suspicious. Uh, am I safe? Am I okay? Can, can we proceed? So always make choices that whose consequences you want you won't regret. Make choices that tomorrow I will not regret the choice I have made today. It may not happen eventually. It may not happen immediately. But I tell you the honest truth. The Bible says whatsoever a man soweth. Get ready for harvest of everything you have been sowing. All that you have been sowing with your life. Wait for the harvest. The lies, wait for the harvest. Not some of you lied until you lie to your pastor. Chai, including this one, that can tell you are lying. What, 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 a, what a blunder. So used to lies, to a capacity even you lie about your name. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Do good always. Stay shining always. Be the light everywhere you go. I remember somebody that told me in my office nobody can discuss nothing when I'm around. Why, why can they discuss? Because everything they are talking is how to rip from the company. But because they know as long as I'm there I will say what is honest. To a capacity when pe two people are fighting, they will call him, please come. This one has done this to me. This one has done this to me. Please be the judge. Because we know what you will say is what is right. And that's how he was able to win many into the kingdom of God. How many people can call you, Lorna? How many people in your school can say, if we call Lorna, Lona will say what is true concerning this matter. Or they will say, Achana na uyo. Achana na uyo. Do good always. Write this down. To avoid the way of destruction. I mean, sorry, write it this way. Let me paraphrase it. To avoid the way of instruction is to embrace the path of frustration 
and distraction. If nobody can instruct you and to follow, if nobody can direct you and to obey, if nobody can instruct you good instructions, then you are ready to embrace the highway of frustration and distraction. Are you following me? No, there are those who puffed up than puff jackets. Remember those puff jackets? I've not seen anyone with it in this place. It seems you guys, uh, you need to begin to, to travel to UK when it is cold. Can I hear an amen? So that you buy us some good puff jackets. Job 20 verse 4 to 11. Let's read it in message Bible translation. Let's see what it says. Job 24 to 11. Message Bible translation. Let's read it together. One, two, three. If you see somebody not reading, please slap them for me. A very nice slap that they won't forget. One, two, three. Let's read. Uh huh. Stop. The what? So, if you know this, you can never envy somebody outside church. You can't envy your neighbor that claps from Monday to Saturday and Sunday they wash clothes to begin again going to their disco. You will never envy the prosperity of the wicked. Why? Because you know this scripture. The good times of the wicked are short-lived. Let's continue. Godless joy is only momentarily. Godless joy. They are rejoicing. Oh, to litafua you weekend. You, you are like then they did not go to church. They did not pray. They did not fast. They, but look at their clothing. Look at how they are eating. In fact, your neighbor ensures that every time he buys KFC and uh, pizza, they pass through your door and knock. You, you yourself, you are literally fasting by force. Because there is no food. But him, them, they are drunk and on top of being drunk, they have food and new clothes and new hairstyles. Your hairstyle that you used December, you are still now redesigning it to appear new. Then they are changing it every weekend. And you are wondering what is happening. That is it. I'm just showing you. They might joy, but it is for a moment. Their, their good times are short-lived. Yes, continue. Verse 6. Can you see this? The evil might become world famous. Do you know there are evils that are becoming world famous? Like that LGB something. It's now being talked by everybody. Everybody. It looks something good. It looks, it looks something enticing. There is a thread they brought whereby men used to sag their trousers. Minister David. He's the one that I know he used to sag when he was in class 7. If I ever saw him, that is. They sag to a, to a point like that trouser is about to fall. It became so famous everybody wanted to do it. There is those, what do you call them? Tumbo cuts. Sorry? Crop tops without fruits. Just a crop. Everybody is in it. Exposing, advertising their own flesh. Every corner, every street. Because the thing is useless. Kizuri Chajiusa. So you don't need to be told what is happening. You don't need any prophet to tell you what is happening in the life of that person. In indecency, being 
paraded as something good. The more flesh, the better. The more tight, the better. Now you have competitions from men. What will you do? Now men are, now those who are in that other side, they are wearing the same crop tops. Why do they not call them cassava crops? Evil being paraded. Evil might become world famous. Strutting at the head of the celebrity parade. They are parading every evil so that everybody can see it is good. There is this country, I won't name it, but they know themselves. They celebrate Halloween. Do you know what is Halloween? The day of the dead. Whereby you wear like a dead person. You go to the cemeteries. Everything is scary to the core. But to them, it is a celebration. They have it at village market. At least I think once every year. I'm not sure the occasion. They have it. One day we visited that place. I know we are dealing because we don't go there when they are doing all those nonsenses because of the things on the walls, the things. As it literally is like you are a shrine. You are walking inside a shrine. Skulls everywhere. There are people that wear t-shirts that have skulls of and they parade it like fashion. <laughs> uh, I was with a friend, a Chinese friend, some time ago. And we were traveling to Nakuru. I was taking them to see flamingos. So when we got to the lake, there are these teenage girls and men that had inscriptions. Some of them, they, they had tattoos. And another one had a, a, two had t-shirts that were written in, in Chinese. So this friend of mine ran to me and asked me, do they know what is written behind their t-shirts? Kumbe, um, no, how do I put it? Be previously, what was written was not something bad. It was not something bad. But one letter in Chinese had been washed, washed off from the back. So what it meant, the reading that remained, it's anyone can have my back. Do you know what, what, what that means? You don't get it? As it was so insultive. So when we approached the same team and I asked them, guys, do you know what is written behind, behind your t-shirts? They said, no, we, we, we just bought because the calligraphy looks so nice how it is written in Chinese. So now it took now this guy to tell me now, maybe they missed this one letter because I can tell the cloth has been washed too much. This part of letter is missing. So it will mean something now different. Then you are parading it and everybody is reading something different. Tell your neighbor, learn how to do good. Learn how to be the light. Let's read on verse 6. The evil might become, okay, verse 7. Sorry, sorry. Verse 6, let's read. Uh huh. Up to verse 11. Verse 7. It has hanged. Oh, there is no verse 7. Uh huh. Uh uh. Acquaintances. Look at them with disguised and say, what's that? The same people that saw you as somebody when you were wearing that new hairstyle, when we are, you are wearing those crop tops, when you are doing what they are doing, now they are looking at you and they are saying, what's that? In fact, they have forgotten your name. Verse 8. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I'm so sure you know this with facts. The once notorious public figures, now they are useless. 
very useless to the core. Why? They refuse to remain good, to do good. Yes? Now, unnoticed whether they came or go. They are celebs today. We can't remember them. I kid you not. There are names that rang a bell when you are young. Now they are nowhere to be heard. They sunk. They are way forgotten. You can't tell even what they used to do. Yet they were known by everybody. But their fire was short-lived. Pride kicked in. They short-lived. And an event, to be honest, there are pastors that maybe you knew, but today they are nowhere to be seen. Short-lived. They are also men. Pride kicks in. And everywhere is chaotic now. Number 10. Uh huh. Can you see what happens to a wicked person? Someone that refuses to do good. That's their lifestyle. Galatians 6 9 to 10. ERV. Galatians 6 9 to 10. ERV. Bible translation. Let's move very fast so that today we are on time from church. You have not gotten it? Can we read it together? For in due season, we will reap if we do not. Uh -uh. For in due season, we will reap if we do not give up. Verse 10. So then, as we have opportunity, let us do good to who? To everyone and especially to those who are of the household of faith. Can you see now there's a connection now. God's command is do good to everyone. But especially. I should not find Minister David buying suit for a beggar on the street. It is good. I will clap for him. Yet Nicholas has only one shirt, one shoe, one zero. And he is aware about it. Now you turn out to be something else. You are doing good, but not according to the scriptures. Do good unto all men. Let's read it in ERV. You don't have that translation? Yes. Let's read ERV from verse 9. From verse 9. Easy to read. No, this is not the translation. Yes, exactly. One, two, three. Let's read. Stop. Meaning doing good is tiresome. Oh, Jesus. If you don't know that, then you have not started doing good to anybody. Doing good is tiresome. But the Bible says we must not get tired of doing good. So if the Bible is saying don't get tired, it means it, it, is, it is tiresome. That's why you need to be reminded. Don't be tired of doing good. Yes, it is tiring. Yes, it is strength seeping. Yes, the person you will do good to, they will backbite you. I've heard people say, I have stopped doing good because of what somebody did to me. I have stopped giving because the more I gave, the more they took advantage of me. That is not scriptural. Keep on doing good. We must not get tired of doing good. Uh -huh. Let's continue. Uh -huh. Verse 10. Give special attention to those who are in the family of believers. You are a believer and you are saying, my tithe, if I give to somebody on the road, I have given to God. Ta, you lie. Oh, if I help people on the road, I have given my offering. Ta, you lie. Go and wrap that scripture from your Bible. 
Then now you can tell us. You can tell us that what you have done, you have done it to God. Did you not see what Jesus said in the end times when he was giving the revelation? Separating the goats from the sheep. They will come. We healed in your name. We fed in your name. We did this in your name. And Jesus will say, I never knew you. Whatever you did, you did it for yourself. Don't confuse philanthropist with Christianity. Oh, this man is good. He feeds the poor. He defends the poor. You might be a witch defending the poor. A sorcerer that is feeding the poor. The only reward you have is the thank you they will give you. But whatever you do to one of these, those who you did to one of these, Jesus pointing to his children, you did it to me. And there is a reward for you. Are you hearing me? Oh my, I know thieves that used to be better in giving more than Christians. Oh Jesus. <laughs> Thank God they reformed. They are no longer in that anymore. God anoints you and the, when God anoints you, the evidence of the anointing of God upon your life is doing good. Write it that way. You want to differentiate an anointed woman, an anointed man. Look at their deeds. They are always good deeds. And of course, the vice versa is true. The evidence of wicked men. I mean, uh, the evidence of men and women anointed of the devil to do evil. It is very clear. Acts 10. Acts 10. Verse 38, Amplified Bible Version. Acts 10, 38, Amplified Version. Can we read it together? One, two, three. Uh -huh. After the anointing, what did Jesus go doing? So before you say this person is well anointed, let's classify the de his deeds. Let's classify the deeds because they will determine if this is the correct person. So how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with great power and he went around doing good. And we have said the evidence of an anointed person is good deeds. The opposite we have said it is true. The evidence of someone filled with a contrary spirit is evil deeds. Oh my. You see, we are in a world where people are dishonest. We are in a world whereby honest people are few. Can you be among the few? Good people are very few. Be among the few. People that carry light wherever they go, very few. Be among us the few. I know people that are something else in church, something else outside there. He, on Sunday, oh my goodness, you find the sister, the brother in church, you will know that there is God. But meet them on Monday you will have an assurance the devil exists. In other words, they can confirm to you the existence of God on Sunday. And on Monday until Saturday, they will confirm to you the existence of hell. Even if you have never known there is hell. Are, we flow are you flowing together with me? Don't be that kind of a person. Don't be among such people. That on Sunday, you are, when you are in church, you are someone else. And outside church, Jesus, only events know. During light, during the day, you are the best. At night when everything is dark. Tutoboy to sitoboy. The things you do behind in the cover of darkness. Even the devil is scared of them. 
Someone said, at times I wonder when we do some things that the devil never knew we can do. I said, he comes with a notebook to take note so that he knows how to move ahead with the other person. Don't be tired of doing good. Don't be tired. Yes, they have backstabbed you. Don't be tired of doing good. Yes, they fired you. Don't be tired of doing good. Yes, they misunderstood you. Don't be tired of doing good. They have taken you for granted. Don't be tired of doing good. They have misused you. Don't be tired of doing good. It's your nature to do good. Your father is good and good continually. Good for continually. He has no iota of evil in him. So be like your father. Even if they take advantage, do good. Galatians 5.16 TPT Bible Translation Galatians 5.16 TPT then have Isaiah 60 verse 2 to 3 Amplified Classic. Let's read together 1, 2, 3. Mm -hmm. Can you see how you can begin to do good? As you yield freely, not forcefully, and fully to the dynamic life and power of the Holy Spirit, you will abandon the cravings of your self-life. If you want to live a godly, goodly life, then you must be in sync with the Holy Spirit. You can't do good on your own. Oh my, doing good takes more than I am a good person. <laughs> some of you, you need to know some of these things. So, being good, if I tell you how many people have tried to take, if it were not for the help of the Holy Spirit, take advantage of me because I'm a man of God. Others take advantage of us even as a church because church is for good people. So they should uh, always be doing good. If it is not for the Holy Spirit, we would have been duped severally in this church. People come lie to us left, right and center. Oh, I'm going through this. I'm going through that. I, oh, Pasi, I've never, I've never lived in any house. Pasi, I've not eaten for seven days. Me as a pastor, I, I, I fast. And you're telling me seven days you stay without food freely. Without the, help of, with the, without the help of the Holy Spirit. How? How? As you yield freely and fully to the dynamic life and power of the Holy Spirit, you will, it is an automatic thing. You will begin to detest what is evil. The reason many are still romancing with sin, they have no fully and freely given themselves to the power of the Holy Spirit. The reason you are struggling in one area or the other, you have not given freely and fully to the dynamic life and power of the Holy Spirit. When you find yourself still lying, find yourself still compromising, find yourself still entertaining what is ungodly, it is because of this. You need to freely give yourself. You need to fully donate yourself to the dynamic life of the power of the Holy Spirit. You are in church today, tomorrow we don't know. You are in the prayer team today. The other Wednesday we don't know whether you will be there. You are in choir today. We don't know about your position anymore. You are in Bible study today. We don't know if you will ever come again for the Bible study. You are in for maybe coming to clean this place or you are an usher. In one day, we don't know where you have gone. You, have, you are yet to abandon the cravings of self. You want to cut off cravings 
that are not godly, then release yourself fully to the working power of the Holy Spirit. Yield yourself. And how that can happen is when you come together. When we come together, some of you need to hear the testimonies that we receive every Wednesday. I wonder why some of them are not here today. Or at least I have a report about one person. Testimonies of drastic change. Families changed when prayer is being made here. Embargoes of years broken when we are still here. Oh my. When we began this prayer, there is one lady. All of you, you will know her very soon. Because she will be coming. And maybe she is even watching online. It's like God is on a fast lane with her. I'm telling you with all honest. I know people we have prayed for. It has taken years. It has taken months. It, 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 it tested our patience. God, we have prayed. Is it because our prayers are not coming? Please, do we need to send someone to come and remind you of our prayers? Have you ever prayed and you know God has answered? But there is no answer that has landed. But this one, every prayer point she sends, it is answered the following day. Or even before we are stepping outside this church. And I'm talking about, oh my, prayer points, some which people are waiting for eternity. Let me give you one of our testimonies. On, um, I believe it was on a Tuesday or Monday. We, she called me in the morning hours and we were just talking. And when we were talking, I, I, I made, I made, uh, I, I, I made uh, I, I made I, I made I made something. Please excuse me, uh, mm -hmm. Nicholas. Uh -huh. uh, talk to my father. He is uh, is calling. So let him know. On Tuesday or Wednesday. She called me in the morning time and, uh, no, it was Tuesday, no, Monday. Monday, yes. She called me and we were talking and we were discussing some plans she has with her family. And uh, one of the prayer points she, we agreed we need to pray is she needs more physical time with the hubby. Do you know what it means, more physical time? As if we need to talk, we need to meet more often here and there. We need to go out together and all that. But now she was going, how will I convince this man that we need to be doing these things together? So on Wednesday, we came here and uh, we prayed. Guess what? The following day, no, on Friday, she called me. I was busy somewhere, so I could not answer her phone. So she sent a text message. Please, send me your Mpesa number. Ah, who is me? We first stop what we were doing to, to, to release <laughs> the Mpesa number. So I sent her Mpesa number. So once I was through, she, I told her when I will be through. So she called again. I, she could not reach me, so I tried to call her back. When I called her back, she told me, sir, I'm in, uh, I'm steaming. I'm somewhere being pampered. So she sent me, in fact, the video of the door. She told me we will talk after this. Those, how many people have gone to steaming? Have you ever done steaming? I have a nice facial. Have a nice steaming. Is that okay? Lorna, it is not evil. <laughs> ah, Jesus. Caro, it is not of the devil. Please, treat yourself as a king you are. Are you hearing me? Now some of you, hey, Pasi, Pasi, hey, Pasi hey, of all things. Please treat yourself. It's your body. You don't have a spare part. Are you hearing me? Treat yourself well. Don't be like those people that they work, 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 very tiring jobs. And they went, they go sit down and eat Madondo with very <laughs> unsaved chapatis. Imeungu on every side. Very burnt marks on every side. Treat yourself well. Say to yourself, this year, hi, I will treat myself well. God, this is your house. I will take care of it.
let me tell you, do you know that what you are carrying is God's house? So the more you treat it well, the more you can hear his voice. Some of you, oh Jesus. Treat yourself well, oh. Nancy, I hope, I hope you are listening. How you are, your, your, your testimony has brought something else. So Nancy, straight to... So I'm wondering, how comes this woman... So she, she gave me the entire story. I was dropping my child at home, I mean at school. Then I decided, let me pass through a mall. And I, when I passed through the mall, who is standing in front of me? My husband. Where? At the perfume corner. At the perfume corner. Of course, you know there is no men. When you are found there, there is no speaking in tongues. No tongues can pull you out. My husband, what are you doing here? Oh, I had come. My perfume is over. Please also pick yourself for, for your own. Bam, 20k one candle. Oh, I have just remembered. My makeup is kaput. Ah, go get them. And she told me other things here and there and there. Then on the party shot, please, when can we have dinner? When can we have ourselves a dinner? And on top of that, here is 10,000 for your fuel. No plan at all. And before anything, can you please rush to this place, treat this skin well? Just because people prayed. How much you, how much more you, you, you will go and treat that body very well. Some of you, if you know what you carry in the inside, you will wear well. You will smell well. Ask Patricia, on, on, on Wednesday we were here, and I told them, some of you hate perfume because you are taught it is of the devil. Can I tell you something? Perfume is of God. God is the author of perfumes. God loves good smelling things. God loves when you smell good to a capacity faith. When God was born on this earth, of all the presents, perfume was part of it. Oh, you are disagreeing with me. Dennis, you are saying uh, that is not true. Can I put it further? On the altar in those days, Edith, they needed to burn something there. So that it is, and God had to make a choice of what sense should be in front of that place. So what are you telling me? Oh, Pasi, I don't hear God. Oh, Pasi, I don't think I have good dreams. I won't finish. Seller. Smell good, look good, you will be confident to tell God, I am your child. Some of you are not even confident in prayer. Chai. Never God will ask what you did with this temple. Some of you will not even want to stay there. We read Galatians, right? Is the one on the field. Galatians 6, 5, 16. Let, let me read it in TPT because this is not the translation I needed. TPT says, let me emphasize this. As you yield to the dynamic life and power of the Holy Spirit, you will abandon the cravings of your self-life. Oh, it's almost the same. Almost the same. So do good no matter what you go through. Tell that to somebody. Do good no matter what you go through. Say to yourself, I will do good no matter what I go through. So never give up on doing good, even on difficult times. Your light shines brighter in the midst of gross darkness. Write that down. My light shines great, greater, brighter, even in the midst of gross darkness. And that's where we are reading Isaiah 60, verse 2 to 3. Isaiah 60, verse 2 to 3. So what does it say? 
What does it say? One, two, three. Let's read. Ah, uh ah. -uh. Isaiah. No songs of solo. Ah, uh ah. -uh. Please, when I was talking about perfumes and all that, this is not what I was. I didn't mean we go here. Unajua kuna mtu aliniambia, unajua pasi mi nilikatiwa na the books of Solomon. No ka ingia box. You are a mumu. Tai. Hati nilikatiwa na Biblia. How? Which chapter? I asked them. So I hope they read to you and Judas asked them himself. It is also in the Bible. So I hope they read for you that, pla that place. Let's read together. One, two, three. So it is a fact. Darkness will cover. It's a fact darkness will be available. Let's read on. And deep darkness will cover the people. But the Lord will rise upon Max. I don't know about you, but it's me. The Lord will rise upon Max. And his glory and brilliance will be seen in me. Nations will come to my light. Why? Everywhere is dark. Are we flowing together? The reason people will come to me, the reason people will come to you is because you are the one with the light. Oh my. You will be the light in the dark world. You will be the one with the solution that the world is looking. That's the interpretation. Let's read it together. Nations will come to your light and kings to the brightness of your rising. Why is it that people are not coming to you? Why is it that nations are not coming to you? You need to shine your light. You need to do good. Doing good shines the light. I gave you the example of that man that if everything is happening upside down, they will know the only person that is right and correct is that one person. Why can't you be the person that people can point and say, this is the correct girl. This is a correct man. In case you are looking for anything dark, you won't find it in this person. How comes people who want to gossip, they find you? People who want to do evil, they find you. People who want to smoke bank, they are still beckoning at you. It means there's something they are seeing that they can assimilate with. But when you carry light, then all you attract are nations. All what you attract is kings coming to the brightness of your rising. The more good you keep on doing, the more visible you become to everybody. Because good people are rare. And they don't have so many friends. Neither do they even have friends at all. Either one friend or no friend at all. When you become the person that stands for what is right, always, then only kings, respectable men, noble men, will come to you. Those who understand your value will come to you. Verse 4. Oh no, we needed up to verse 3. So that is okay. So the enemy wants to frustrate you until you stop doing good. Say with me, I will not be frustrated. Say it boldly. So don't allow any frustration from any quarter stop you from doing good. Is that okay? Galatians 6 talk about you. Don't give him the chance. Don't give him the opportunity. Are we together? Oh my, you thought you don't have enemies. Wait till you get that job. Wait till you buy that car. Wait till you build. Wait till you change the hairstyle. Wait till you change your, how you dress. You will realize not everybody around you was your friend. Are we together? Oh, it's because you don't see this church in any news. Just give us some time. You will see us on news. You will see citizen TV in this place. <laughs> when you begin to burn, when you begin to shine, you will attract everything. Every, I'm telling you, you will hear things and you will be like, if I was not part of that church, I will say those people are correct. 
Have you ever found people talking about you to a, to a capacity you need to sit down with them and take notes about yourself? Because you don't know yours. They know you too much. One day I was seated with people and uh, they were discussing about my father. They didn't know. And I didn't even tell them. Neither will they even ever know. We were, they were discussing about him. So I, I was, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. G give more, give more, uh -huh. So I called my dad and I told him, no, I'm from this place and this and this and these people were talking about you. Only that they were talking positive things. They tried to bribe him. He said he can never be bribed by anybody. The lady said, we gave him every manner of money. He could not accept. And for that reason, they have respect for that man. I mean, that is a better testimony of you. That's a better gossiping of you if you find people talking about you. Question is, if you were to find people talking about you, what do you think they will be saying? People who know you. Give us Ephesians 5, verse 8, amplified. Ephesians 5, 8, and you also cue in 2 Corinthians 3, 2, ASV. Ephesians 5, 8, amplified. 2 Corinthians 3, 2, ASV. Then Acts 17, 23, amplified. Let's begin with Ephesians 5, verse 8. Let's read it together. 1, 2, 3. Live as those who are native born to the light. Meaning, you don't struggle to shine. You don't struggle to do good. Oh my, have you ever seen people that will fast to do good? Because it's not their nature. It's not their way of life. Don't struggle to do good. Don't struggle to shine. You are a light. These bulbs don't need to fast before they shine bright as they are shining. It is natural. Second Corinthians 3 2 ASV. Second Corinthians 5 verse 2 ASV. What does it say? Uh -uh. We don't have Second Corinthians 3 verse 2. All right. Oh, the version is the one that is delaying. Okay, I understand. Let's read it. One, two, three. You are our epistle, not epistles. Epistle. Let's read it together. You are our epistle, written in our hearts, known and read of all men. That is what I was trying to show you earlier on. You are a light. The reason you will make news at all times is because men, I told you before, men have stopped reading the Bible. They are reading God's children. Faith. As you are walking, men are reading a scripture in your life. Question is, what scripture, which scripture are they reading? Are they saying, and Jesus wept when they look at you. They look at your lifestyle. And they say, this is why Jesus wept. Because they can remember, they can associate themselves with that. What scripture are men reading when they look at your life? When they look at your lifestyle? When they look at how you carry yourself? Which scripture comes to their mind? Men stopped reading the Bible. They are reading your lifestyle. Your lifestyle is what is introducing Christ to them. Is either chasing Christ from them or introducing Christ to them. How you wear, how you communicate, how you handle matters will determine if men will know Christ or men will detest Christianity. It's, it's upon you to decide. That's why Paul said, you are our epistles, you are our letters. When men look at you, they should read something about God. When men meet with you, they should feel something about God. When men come around your house, they should feel something about God. Acts 17, 23, amplified. Acts 17, 23. Let's read together. One, two, three. Uh-huh. 
Ajá. To a known God. Therefore, what you already worship as a known, this I proclaim to you. This was Paul going through the land of Israel. And he came to a place where they had an altar that was written to an unknown God. Yet they were worshipping that unknown God. Do you worship a God that is unknown? Do you worship a God that is unknown to you? The God we worship is very known to us. So do good. Doing good is actually one of the greatest ways to evangelize. We are now winding up. Doing good is the greatest form of evangelism. You want to evangelize to people in your office, do good to them. You want to evangelize to people in that matatu, pay their bus fare, introduce Christ to them. You want to introduce Christ in your school, do good. Any domain where you are found, do good. Evangelism will be easy. For those of you that say, Oh, I don't know how to evangelize. I've just shown you the greatest secret. The more good you do to men, the more they would want to listen to you. And number two, write this down. The morals you uphold rightly is the light that men will see. Your light is visible Via your morals. Via your lifestyle. You are living. The reason that darkness looks like it is overwhelming. Use light where there is darkness. That's why it looks like darkness is covering the entire world. But not after today. Not after today. If you stop doing what is good now, listen to this. If you stop doing what is good now, you are the cause of what will happen tomorrow. You stop doing good now, then the evil of tomorrow, you will be a partaker of it. Because you are good that you are doing today. There will be light in your tomorrow. There will be evidence of good harvest waiting for you in your tomorrow. And now the vice versa of that is every negative thing you do, you add to the already existing darkness. Every good thing that you do, you are fueling to the already existing light. So you do evil, you are hardened to the already existing darkness. We have said already the world is covered by darkness. The world is already in the quankma of darkness. So you do good, you begin to eliminate that, eliminate that darkness. But you do evil, you are hardened to the evil that is already existing. So choose to do good always. Amen? So doing good, being the light, is the only way people will know you are of God. Doing good, being the light, is the only way men will know that you are of God. Acts 11, verse 26, the voice, voice Bible translation, Acts 11, 26. Let's read it together very fast. One, two, three. Why were they first called Christians in Antioch? Their deeds. The person they stayed with, now they were reflecting his ways. They were reflecting his talk. They were reflecting his mannerism. Christianity was not a name given by God. I, I'm so sure you know that. Christianity was given by people that were not even saved. It was given by people in a city in Antioch. They looked at the lifestyles of the disciples. How they could, what 
what, everything the disciples were doing, what they could only remember was Christ. They talked like him. They performed like him. They moved like him. So they said, these ones are small Christ. They are small Christ. Can somebody look at you and say the same? This one is a small God. This one, the way they do things, the way they speak, the way they wear, it is completely a show that this one is a child of God. Why everything is embedded in Christianity. Amen? Write this down. Doing good takes humility. Do, for you to continually and consistently do good, you need to be humble. Pride people can never and consistently do good. Those who do good, it detects humility to consistently do good. Philippians 2.8 Philippians 2.8 Amplified Bible version. Philippians 2.8 Amplified Bible version. Philippians 2.8. Oh, we are now through. Almost uh, two scriptures, then we are done. Can we read it together? One, two, three. Mm. Mm -hmm. After he was found, this is Jesus in terms of his outward appearance as a man that is God. For a divinely appointed time, he, he humbled himself still further by becoming obedient to the Father to the point of death, even the death of cross. Jesus, who was anointed, went about doing good. But not only good, he did it to the point of dying. That's why we said doing good takes a lot of humility. Joseph kept doing good even after remembering what his brothers did to him. Please write it down that way. You will go and read the story at home. Joseph did not revenge. They planned his death. They planned to sell him as a slave. They planned to kill him. But he still, when he remembered all what they did to him, he still did good to them. You are continuous doing good will always catapult you to greater heights in life. Even when the, his employer Potiphar threw him in prison for no apparent reason, he continued to do good in prison. Instead of going to the prison and mama, they, I did not do it, yet they threw me in prison. He was concerned about the lives of the other prisoners. And his continuous doing good in prison elevated him to be in charge of all the rest of the prisoners. Are we together? So, doing good pays. Doing good pays as rewards. Tell your neighbor, let your goodness not be partial. Tell them very boldly, let your goodness not be partial. David decided, I mean, Joseph did good. Even when his master was away, he refused to sleep with the master's wife. Even when he had the opportunity to. Why? His way of life was, I need to do good always. There are people that do good, especially in church, because pastor is watching. Pastor is involved. That's when they can be energetic to do. But when their HOD is the one involved, ah, is it not Nicholas? Is it not so and so? Why should we be even be concerned about this or that? So let your goodness, you are doing good, not be partial. David kept doing good to Saul, even after Saul was looking to kill him. That's the other example. David continually did good to Saul. Even so, when Saul was looking to kill him, even when the opportunity opened for Saul, for David to kill Saul, David did not kill Saul. Why? He was a man of good deeds. And also we see, this was transferred even after he became king. 
even when he was a leader. A time came they killed men in his village. They captured his children, his wives. And on the way, he met a man that had been injured from the enemy camp. And because he was a man used to doing good, he stopped the entrance. Guys, yes, I know we are pursuing to recover our families. But there's a man injured. Can you feed the guy? Give the guy water. Attend to his wounds first. Some of you, I'm so sure you would have killed the guy. Ah, you are part of the people that were taken our wives and children. You just finish up whatever that man was suffering from. This guy was wounded from another, another camp. But David stood to do good. And out of his doing good, the same man directed him where to find the enemy. Ah, uh, you are not listening to me. His good nature, his character, helped him recover with speed. The wives, the children, and plant everything else that the enemy had in the, had in the camp. Some people you have kicked along the way because they were wounded. Because they never appeared like nobody. They might have been the only solution you needed to your next level in life. The only solution you needed to recover everything that the enemy had taken away from you. Let's read Proverbs 25, 21 to 22. Let's read 1, 2, 3. Louder. You will heap coals of fire upon his head. The Lord will reward you. Let me tell you the greatest way of punishment and revenge. Are you ready? A greater way to revenge anybody that is doing you evil is that scripture. By doing good. By doing good. If you decide to do good to those who have purposed to do harm to you. I'm not talking about witches. Hello? Are we together? People that have just decided to do evil to you is by doing good to them. Being good. Being good, actually, the Bible describes, it is like heaping cause of hot charcoal on the head of your enemy. And of course, there's a reward attached to that. Doing good, I say, there's a reward attached to every good deed that you do. Romans uh, 12, 20 to 21. Then we have Numbers 25, 8 to 11 as our last scripture. Romans 12, 20 to 21, voice Bible message. Let's read together. One, two, three. That is almost the same like what we have just read in Proverbs, right? This Proverbs is the whole Testament. This one is being repeated in the New Testament. Moses had an opportunity to allow death destroy all the children of Israel, but he stood to defend them. Moses had the opportunity to allow God kill all the Israelites, but he stood on the gap and he did something good that saved all of them. Re listen to this. You can't do right. You can't do right. Goodness. I mean, anything right unless you trust in God and you are guided by him. If you are to do anything good, if you are to do anything right, then you need to depend completely upon God. And that is in Numbers 25, 8 to 11. That's our final scripture. Numbers 25, 8 to 11. Let's read it together like you have energy to finish the service. One, two, three. That's good. Uh -huh. Let's read it together. One, two. And he went after the man of Israel into the tent and thrust both of them through. The man of Israel and the woman through her body. So the plague was stopped among the children of Israel. Continue. And those who died in the plague were 24,000. Then the Lord spoke to Moses saying, 
Uh -huh. Continue up to verse up to verse 11, yes? Phinephas, the son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron, the priest, has turned back my wrath from the children of Israel because he was zealous with my zeal among them so that I did not consume the children of Israel in my zeal. So this is just a short story about a man. The children of Israel were started intermarrying other tribes and God was not happy because they were disobeying what he had directed them. So one day this guy when they were plagued and already 24,000 Israelites have already been killed by a plague that came about because of the disobedience of the children of Israel in the marrying other people. This guy walked in with another lady from another tribe and went straight to his bedroom with the lady. Yet 24 men, women have died out of the same mistake. And one guy stood and said, not in my watch. I will not allow the wrath of God continue and continue to burn in my day and in my presence. And he took a spear and went and killed not only the guy, but plus the woman. Oh my. You know, when God showed me something about this, I said, do you know at times doing the right thing, the good thing, it might not be popular. It might not be popular. It might not be in line with everybody's uh, morals at all. You can do something good, but it will appear bad. But God will be clapping to you. God will be clapping. The Bible says after he killed the two of them, God went to the pastor and said, because of so and so in your church, that saw how much I was burning inside. How these people have been doing opposite of what I have told them. I have turned back my wrath. The plague is taken away from Israel because of the act of this person. Is it a good act? No, it doesn't appear. But it is still a good act. Because it is stopped men from dying in Israel. If you have to be consistent in doing good, listen to this, turn your heart from the clapping of men. That is the last benediction I give you. If you have to continue doing good consistently, don't look at who is clapping. Don't stop looking for who will notice what I'm doing. If you are to be a, a, a doer of good consistently, stop looking for who to clap for you. Then you will do good consistently and effortlessly. Amen? No, that reminds me, one of the Tuesdays, no, this is very bad. Huh? We have finished service, so you can close your notes. On one of the Tuesdays, uh, our, our man of God was preaching. Of course, those who know the headquarters, I sit nowadays at the find. That's how they decided to rearrange us. So, this drunk guy walks in straight, passes the past, the first pastor. In fact, not the first pastor. Passes the first people that are seated near the door. Walks straight. Passes the first pastor, the second pastor, and walks straight to my man of God. I had to run from my city to go and grab the guy and push him away from the altar. You did it. My daddy was not happy at all. At all, at all. At all, at all. Because all of us, we were watching. All of, we know all our members. It's not like we don't know our members. But a stranger has just walked in. And he's walking straight to your man of God. And you are just seated. What, what, what kind of rottenness is that seriously? Because that is what I asked myself. What was I doing when he passed the first people? I'm not even looking at those who were passed. I'm not looking at even the pastors that were seated near. I'm looking, what was I doing? Yet I know, what about if this guy was carrying a gun? Are we to
grace to do good, grace to do good in my realm, in my school, in my career, in everything I do, in my family. I know they have hated me for no reason, but Father, help me to do good continually. Help me to do good, for I have learned in this service there is a reward attached to the man, to the woman that consistently does good. That's good. Let shaka baragada. Pray for yourself. Pray for yourself. Pray for yourselves. Let shaka toze kepe ragada. Let toko parate zekela. Including those of you watching online. Pray for yourself. Father, I apply for grace. Grace to do good. Grace to do good. Grace to shine the light of my God in my generation. La zako te kepe rataya. Father, I position myself to be the correct person that will correct the world, a world that is upside down and bring it the right side up in the mighty name of Jesus. It is hard to forgive. It is hard to forget what they are doing. But Lord, I refuse to conform to my feeling, to be driven by my feeling. Lord, help me to do good always and call Continually unto all men, I katazuze ketele prataya, ele gratasha tote baya, ese kute brekedia, la shatata zeketala bayada. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. The Bible has said, as many as have an opportunity to do good, let them do good. Maybe that one day you refuse to do what is right. It is the reason why it looks like your prayers have not been answered. It may be the reason why the answers look like they have delayed because you missed it out. Father, every opportunity I miss to do good. Father, I ask, give me another chance. Give me another chance to do good. To do good. God, I receive another chance to do good. Lift up your voice. If there is anywhere you know I needed to do good but I did not do it. God has just reminded you. Tell him, Father, I receive forgiveness and I receive grace to go back again and do good. I receive an opportunity. I receive a restoration of another opportunity so that I do good and my reward comes to me and my reward comes to me whereby my reward eluded me because I did not do what I was supposed to do and to my brothers and to my sisters. Lord, I receive grace. I receive the grace for another opportunity to do good and what is right. In Jesus mighty name we pray. Can you put your hands together for Jesus as we have our seat? You can do it better if you have learned something. If God has given you a word, I know you can appreciate him better. Let's have our seats as we receive the choir to give us a praise song as we collect our offerings. And also as you are doing that, kindly let's begin to acknowledge those of you that are watching online. For everyone watching online, it's time to give. The giving number is the giving platform is, has already been given. Send your offering, send your tithes, send any special giving. Put it, your account, let it be offering or tithe or any other special giving that you are giving for. Let it be your account. And of course, I will pray with you. If you have, you, are given, you, are, you have given or you are given your tithe, please, I would also like to pray together with you. I would like to pray together with you if you are doing that. In Jesus' mighty name. Choir, please give us at least a praise song. Where is the keyboardist? You have fired Nicholas from here. So if you are giving cash, please come and drop it in front here. Uh, you don't need any ceremonies. Just walk in front and place your offering in, on the offering bucket. Then uh, those of you giving online, let us know the result for the giving offering tithe. If it is tithe, please notify us so that we are able to pray together with you. I know there are those of you that have already given online. Please bear with us. We are going to pray together with you also. 
Give us, give us, give us our praise song as we give. Let's be on our feet as we give and as we join the choir to praise God with our praise song. Once praise song. Huyu Yesu si sanamu si mwanadamu. Give us a dancing ball song. I really appreciate it. Uh, Edith, please. Give us a, a song that has a speedy tempo. This kind God. Exactly, oh, yes. I've never seen your type. Oh, Can we be on our feet as we dance to this song kind together? God, oh, blessed, blessed be your holy name. This kind God. Oh, I've never seen your type, oh. This kind God, oh. Blessed be your holy name. This kind of God, oh. This kind God, oh. I have never seen your type, oh. This kind God, oh. Blessed be your holy name. This kind of God, oh. This kind God, oh. Holy name. 